Hello beautiful people there, Christian here from Stupid Game Dev and today I'm going to show you how to make uh, like smooth, how to make the AI to rotate smoothly and also a little bit more further. Let me quickly show you first what we are going to do. Now, as you can see, we have this character here and whenever I go close to them, look what they, how they will... So, as I was saying, just look when I... Will you not move? All right, so let's actually use this bigger view so we can see it better. So, as I was saying, when you look at when we actually get... Stop moving! Mm! Let's just continue. Hello guys, this is Christian from the Stupid Game Dev, <laughs> for real this time, unlike just previously before the intro logo. Um, this video was actually suggested by Jessica Marin, Marina Rashi, I hope if I... I hope I pronounce it okay. I'm going to show you how to make an AI rotate smoothly. We're gonna do the basic, the really simple... Uh, Blend Space 1D, which is, well, it's not gonna look so nice, but it works. Then we're gonna make it a little bit more advanced uh, with directional movement. However, if you want to make it exactly perfect, I think you would need root motion, but we are not going to do, be doing that, no. We're gonna do uh, Blend Space 1D and then just Blend Space, uh, the directional version. So, so as you can see now, when she's gonna start walking, it's gonna be... Yeah, as you can see, it doesn't look so well. He, she turns or rotates smoothly, yes, that's the main goal here, but she looks a little ugly when, like, rotating, like, she's, like, walking at the same time while rotating. And... But if we use... I'm gonna call this use advanced, complete save. Now you can see... When she rotates, it looks a little bit better. Not perfect, but better. Well, in that case, it doesn't. doesn't. Let me to make sure she's actually rotated correctly. Um, so she's walking over there. I'm gonna make sure uh, she's actually. Let's rotate that way. Uh, let's see if now. Yeah, it looks already way better. Not perfect, but like better with a. Without root motion, I think this looks nice. Then we also have this, um, when when we go close to her, you can see that she's actually started to look at us. She is even rotating towards us until she starts moving. And whenever she's moving, she's not turning at us, but she is still looking at us. And, all right, so I think that's nice. And let's see when she starts, starts moving. There you go. It looks already kind of good. So we're going to be doing these two things today. So, first we're gonna start with the very basic. So, let's get started. I have here, I'm gonna uh, actually rename this tutorial folder. So, so I'm gonna right click, animation, plane space, 1D. This is the per the normal that mostly can you use, because for the other one we are gonna need directional movements, which is like strafing, uh, walking right, left, uh, backwards and forward and all that, but this requests only idle walk forward and or and slash or run forward. So we're gonna do that first. So play space 1D, select your uh, skeleton you need. I'm gonna call this tutorial bullshit. Uh, this is actually 1D. All right, so I'm gonna open it up and so here we are, the axis, axis settings, the name is going to be speed, and the speed for me is 400. This, this um, value really depends on uh, what speed perfect for the animation speed you have, like for the animation itself, yes. For me it's 400 and 180 is for walking. Number of crits, I'm going to make it 40, it's a lot, but we get everything. So, zero, one, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. We don't exactly need idle, but you can still add it because, because at some, like, 
like well well obviously we do need idle but if you have more than one idle animation then we can we're gonna do another thing then we need walk and gotta make sure it's not root motion uh forward low uh, walk forward nice and that was 180 for me and then we need run forward as well run forward loop no i don't want root motion uh, i want this one all right so this is what we need walking and running these are correct yes we can now save and close this and let's create animation blueprint and so we go to animation animation blueprint i'm gonna select my skeleton here i'm gonna click ok and we're gonna call this tutorial anim bb so this is so that i know that it's this one so here we are now we don't use montages so we can simply skip that part so we are gonna need a state machine right yes new state machine i'm gonna call this locomotion because why not um all right so we also gonna do this perhaps yeah let's do also we need something else between here because we are still going to do the looking uh, at player when in range we need to tran we need transform here transform modify bone and we need it here and then i'm gonna duplicate the no actually not yet what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change some settings here so in here we don't need translation or scale so we can just disable them by clicking this exposed as pin and uncheck expose as pin so it gives you these values here so that's how you do that boom as you can see here we have on rotation and we want on rotation now i'm gonna duplicate this here because i'm gonna do it for two bones you can do it for as many as you want basically but i'm not gonna do it for one only now i mean for two uh then i'm just gonna connect this in there we go now um for rotation i'll just drag out and promote to variable and this is gonna be my head so i'm gonna type in head and the second one is gonna be uh promote to variable i'm gonna uh, be spine one that's what i'm gonna be using now select the first one of these and we have to do some changes here so bone to modify is head obviously so i'm gonna search for head if you have custom skeleton you can still just f find what's what is the joint or the bone for the head and then ro in rotation the rotation mode we need to add to existing and compile and then we have to do the same for the second one the bone for me is spine underscore one and rotation mode is add to existing compile and boom, save and now it's gonna get errors because here is not nothing so let's do that now so but let's open our locomotion the state machine and um uh, now this really depends how much different things you have in, you, you will have inside animation blueprint um for me i'm gonna do it this way so i'm gonna track and do states and i'm gonna call this idle slash movement so this that is there inside this there, there's gonna be all of, uh, both the idle and movement animations so now if you only have one idle animation all you have to do is just track your uh, your plane space 1d in here connect it directly there and just drag out from speed and promote to variable and boom you're done that's all you have to do in this best place but if you have multiple idols and you want to use uh, like random animation idol it's gonna it's, it's gonna choose randomly every now and then then this is how you can do it so i'm gonna just disconnect this and what i need to do here is i'm gonna need to get the speed again or we can just track it from here we need to check is our speed greater than uh, 0 0.01 0.01 then what we need is i'm gonna drag out from the results here and we can use bool so uh, blend poses by bool 
And if this is false, we're gonna do something else. So we need to connect this blend space to true, and obviously this check with the bool and active value. All right. Uh, as, for, as for the false, all we can do is just right click and random and scroll up to until you see random sequence player. And uh, we can connect this false. And then we can just select the random sequence player and we just can add here as many idle animations as we have. I'm just gonna add three for now. So I'm gonna have idle. Uh, there we go. Chance to play. Uh, the lower, the less chance to play it. So I'm gonna make this to point, 0 0.8. So it's it doesn't have 100% chance. As for the list, uh, sorry. Idle 2 and chance to play. I'm gonna make it point 0.2 and I'm gonna do the same for the idle 3. 0.2. Compile and save it. That's really all we have to do in here. We are going to get back here later on when we do the directional movement. But for now, this is all we need. Now we can go to inside event graph. And what I'm going to do is drag from this try, get pawn owner, and I'm going to check is this valid. Because then we don't get any errors. Then um, I would like to promote this to variable or cast for cast, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to do things that doesn't require it. So I'm going to drag from the return value. We need to get uh, get velocity and from velocity. We need to get a vector vector length uh, vector length. This is our speed. Boom. boom. Boom and compile and save and this is actually done for this. Now let's check out. Well, we still have to do some other changes. So I'm gonna just quickly reset here everything. This doesn't matter. So I'm gonna quickly check. Um, okay, that's fine. That is fine. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm using now this. Tutorial on MBP component and say, all right, so now we get to the part where we make the AI to rotate smoothly whenever they are changing direction or moving direction. So all you have to do is just select the main AI or whatever it is. You can just click class defaults here and make sure use controller rotation yaw is uh, unchecked. After that, go to character movement component here. Scroll down until you see character movement rotation settings. And check orient rotation to movement. Also, if you want to your AI to rotate or turn, like a rotate smoother, like slower, all you have to do is just in the rotation rate, just make the Z value low, not like lower. The lower, the slower. The higher, the faster. And now you're done. Now you can see. It. There we go. It doesn't look good. It looks. It, 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 it's like she's trying to move. She's playing on a movement animation while she's turning, uh, which isn't that good. Um, like even with uh, even with uh, directional movement. It's still not going to be perfect because we because we would need root motion to do it as perfect as possible. Now what we can do is to make her to look. I mean, if you don't want to do so that the character will actually rotate and look at uh, the player, you can actually then go on and remove these and just connect this back to here and you are done. Uh, then for you, I'm going to say thank you for watching and I will see you next time. So if you want to make the character to look at player whenever player is nearby, let's continue with that. So we have already set up everything in here in the anime craft that we need. All right, so let's get started with the rotation, the looking at the player. So we need to do some uh, functions in the, here. And what we can do is we can just create a function function here. I'm gonna call this 
look at target in this case oh, i'm gonna actually look at player so if you want to use like different target than player then you would have to actually cast to main ai from here like cast like in this case it's my cast to main ai and then from here i would, would need to have and get a custom target uh, variable so so we would actually get the exact target that the player and that the ai is going to look at but since we are doing only player at this point so what we need to do is just look at player and they were, they were in here so now we have to check how many bones do we want to rotate and in this case we are rotating as i said uh spine one and head so i need only two of them and uh, i'm gonna do it manually here um so what we need to do is first things first we need to get player character and um i'm gonna check if this is valid so is valid we're gonna get that so we don't get those errors then and then we can start working on this. So we need, I'm gonna duplicate this get player character. Then I want to try get pawn owner. And from try get pawn, pawn owner, we need to get actor uh, location. And I'm gonna duplicate this because we need to get the location of of our player as well. Drag again from drag get pawn owner and we need to get actor rotation. All right, so from the try get pawn owner, the first get act the get actor location. I need we need to uh, we need a find look at rotation, and the target is gonna be the target the actor location of our player. Now. From the return value, we need we need a delta rotator, and the b b value is gonna be the the uh, lock rotation of the AI itself. Now I'm gonna break this up. So break rotator, not not in the axis, no. Break rotator, boom, boom. There you go. So now what I want to do is I want to create at least for now three local variables um, first I'm gonna call this temp uh, spine roll and it's gonna be float because we want to save these inputs that's important and size the spine is the first thing I'm actually rotating that's the first bone I'm going to be rotating so that's what I'm going to be using um, I'm gonna duplicate this because we need one for each of these. Then spine pitch, and the last is temp spine yaw. Now let's set them up. So we need to set the roll, and then Y and Z we are gonna clamp them. Clamp angle is what we need because we don't want them to keep like rotating unnaturally much no um for y uh usually y is like up down i believe it's so but we can make minimum to minus 10 and maximum to 10 and the second one can be minus 60 and then 60. um then we can set bits after there we go my nose itches then yaw as well and boom we can connect this to here i'm gonna quickly make these guys straight all right um then the next thing is we want to smooth this up and i'm just gonna get my spine here and i want to also set the spine here I'm gonna connect it directly there. Now, from the spine one, we can interrupt. So we can do F interrupt two, and the current, it's gonna be this one, obviously, yes. There we go. And the target we have to calculate, no, but not calculate, but. So what I need to do is we need to create one function where we can see if the, if the player is in range. 
So let's create function and call this is player in range. Range or distance, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be pure function. And for this, we want only one input and one output. Output, I'm going to call return value. And the type is going to be boolean. And input is going to, I'm going to call this distance. It's going to be float. Then I'm going to click this little triangle here to open the settings here and I want to set default value to like let's say 300 that's fine uh, now all we have to do is we need to try get pawn owner and also we need to get player character get player character now what I want to do is I want to check if the player character is valid to prevent those error messages messages so is valid I'm gonna use the macro one. There we go. And if it's true, we're gonna do this. Now we drag out of the try and get pawn owner and we need to get distance to another actor is the character, player character. Now we're gonna check if this distance is less than or equal to well, this distance. And then the return value is the, the boolean one here is the our return value exactly. This is all we have to do here. So we can compile and save. And then we go back to look at player. Now we're gonna get this here. Uh, I'm gonna make 300. From the return value we need to select and we're gonna find down here the one with the yellow ish icon. One, like that. The return value is gonna be the target value here. Now, if it's false, we're gonna leave it as it is, so as a zero. But if it's true, we need to make rotator. There we go. And now I'm gonna set this up. So temp pitch. Uh, I need to get the pitch as uh, so it's the pitch so these are gonna be a little bit different order roll and yaw kind of funny so the yaw goes with yaw but the roll goes with the pitch and this goes with the roll but we need to reverse this so we're gonna multiply this by minus one there we go there we go all right now this is gonna work like oh almost delta time i'm gonna get world delta seconds which is the same as event tick i believe so yes I interrupt speed i'm gonna make it to five now let's add this after here to look at player and let's just see if this works Couple and save and let's try it should work automatically and then, yep as you can see that is working just nicely. Okay, so that, that's fine, but we still want her to be able to rotate the head as well. So let's do that now. Um, back to here. So we have to do base pretty much almost the same thing, but not quite. And it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm just gonna make this a little bit more compact because we need these guys in here. Uh, like that that all right now so what we need to do is we need to i'm gonna select these yes these i'm gonna select these are the exact same so i'm gonna duplicate them afterwards here i can actually i'm gonna comment this as calculate spine rotation then from here what i need to do is we need to minus the spine rotation basically the extra rotation from the head rotation itself all right so let's do that now um here what i'm gonna do is we need i'm gonna drag uh, uh right click and make rotator we need to make the a rotator here so um the X, the roll goes directly into the pitch here. 
And now what comes between is what we are going to do is we need to get local variables. We need pitch and yaw. So we're going to get them. And the pitch comes from the pitch, obviously. So we're going to get from the pitch minus, so float minus by float. And we're going to just minus these guys up like that. And the same goes for the y c itself. Yaw, not y. Yaw. Um, then we're going to just connect this. No, not yet. We need to clamp angle. So clamp angle. Uh, we need two of them. So one is for this one and the other one is for the pitch itself. All right. So what I'm going to do now is here. What I'm going to put is minus 60 and this is going to be 60 and the maximum and the bellow one is going to be minus 40 and 40. Then remember that the pitch goes up to roll and yaw goes to yaw. But we really have to still do one thing in here. Bit, bit, uh, between the roll and the clamp, we need to multiply this by minus one because we need to reverse it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I mean, it's gonna it, it works yes, but it's gonna we need to reverse it so the head doesn't like rotate in a way like, like where it should not. Okay, component safe. Now then, we can pretty much get these guys, leaving this out and this only, and duplicate them in here. And this is not gonna be that. Boom, this is going to be the true. And then we can just connect that with this and we are pretty much done according to my second, my I my, my earlier one. Um I'm gonna re comment this as calculate head rotation. Now we can check if this works exactly. No, not yet. Sorry, we have to replace this with the head. Uh, Compile and save. Now let's see if this worked. So, yes, as you can see, Vivia, she can actually rotate her head slightly more. All right, this is actually looking good, if you ask me. I love it. Great. Um. And then we go away and she looks back in her for forward. Great. Um, let's see how it works when she's actually moving. She's looking at us. She starts moving. All right, she can still look at us, which is nice. And boom. Yes, that is great. OK, um, hey, wait, is there anything else we needed to do? If you have turn uh, in place animations, then from this on forward on, you can follow. If you don't have, you can skip this part because you need those animations. Or, or then if you want to use this without animations, you can still do this as well. Next part is we need to know where exactly she's going to rotate. So we need to do some little calculations. We need one new variable here, which is going to be called turn. Yeah, let's call it turn. And it's going to be index, uh, index, I mean, integer. So the way it works is like, it's going, what's going to handle the turning is, it's going to check, is the player now in the X, I mean, in the left or right side, relative to the to the uh, AI, regardless of the rotation, if we are there, yes. And to do that, we are going to do some calculations. So we need to create a new function. I'm going to call this uh, calculate turn direction. And Basically, we need to get something we already have done. So if I go back and look at player, what we can do is we can duplicate this. Yes. 
so we can duplicate so go back to look at player and just just copy this and then let's go back to calculate and we paste them in here we have to do a little bit change here it's not much and the only change we have to do is just connect these in like uh, the vice versa now we can drag from rotator and break rotator and um, so now we do the an actual calculations for this one which is rather simple really so what am i gonna have to do is um we are i'm gonna drag from the z z is the axis we only care about so from here i want to check is greater or less and we need to duplicate this below because we need two sets of these like that anyway so now that we have these what we can do or what we need to do next is we need to check the angle so the first one we have to check is this greater than minus 180 for some reason then here we need to drag out and we need and boolean we actually need this for both of these all right now in here then what we can do we can actually add here one input it's gonna be float and i'm gonna call this angle so now we are gonna so what this will help us to do is that we need to determine what will be the angle b before the ai can even start turning and this is gonna be it so basically what we have to do is we can promote this local variable i'm gonna call this lot no let's call this local angle so for this since this is going to be minus one we have to multiply this by float by float because we have to make this reversed so we're going to multiply it by multiply it by minus one and then connect it in here and as for the below one we can just connect it directly here uh wait that's wrong one it's going to be the top one and the bottom below bottom one is going to be 180 there we go and now uh, what we can do is we can do here a select and we're gonna select choose this select with the yellowish icon again we're gonna duplicate this and put it under here as well now what we need to do is we need to set the turn because yeah uh, we need these guys to be a float so how to do that we can just drag from turn and search for truncate because we're gonna going to be truncating it and now we can connect this to the below one and from below the false to the return value of the first selection like this so this is the link it's going to be th through and the uh, top one is going to be zero so when error neither one of these are true or is true we are not we are e we are i mean the ai doesn't need to return if it's if this one is true it's gonna be one but if this one is true it's gonna be minus one from balance save and that's actually it so let's go to event graph and we are gonna calculate the direction now Let's go back to this quickly and set the default value for the input angle. I'm going to make this 80. 80 seems pretty nice. Compare and save. Now, then we still have to do more other stuff here. So what are we going to do is this and it's going to be a nice checking. So um, we have this. Here. now what we need to do is we also need to do one other function where we actually rotate the um well we i believe we could have to actually just make this as no it's fine um so we need to do is 
to make the an actual I mean if we would be using root motion then this would be the next part would be kind of unnecessary but since we are not using the root motions we have to do this uh well i can show you why i'm just gonna quickly go back to anim graph let's actually do this first so let's go to anim graph our state machine here then we need to do something here now what i mean what we need is we need i'm gonna make here a new state i'm gonna call this turn turn run, run left and we need to go back to the back here as well i now i'm gonna duplicate this here and i'm gonna rename this as turn right now we need to go back and forward as well. All right, so we also need to be able to go from turn left, to turn right, and vice versa. Now, in order to turn from here to turn left, what we can do here is, what we need to do is we need to check if the speed is, if the speed is less than Oh, uh, point oh one basically, and also if the turn is equal to minus one, so minus is left, zero is nowhere, and one plus one is right. So that's the way we can do this. Then we can copy this, copy locomotion, and let's go to from here to right. So all we have to do is only change the direction, the turn to one. Then from turn right back to the idle, all we have to do is just make sure if this is, uh, if the speed is greater than 0 0.01, uh, we delete this and because we need to check this or, so or boolean, if the turn is equal to zero. Now we can copy this, control C, and we can go from left to idle. And the only thing we have to check is nothing. It's done, the compound safe. Now the uh, top part is simple. What we need to do is from left to right, we need to check only if the turn is equal to one. And then vice versa, from right to left, if it's minus one, if the turn is minus one, boom, 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 boom and save. All right, so now I'm gonna make sure it we doesn't, she doesn't move. So now you can see that it's like, well, there is, oh, sorry. Sorry, I forgot. I have to add them. Um, left. Uh, turn. Left 90. And it's going to be loop. Yes. And now right is going to be turn 90. Right. So now. As you can see. You can see. Without one more thing we have to do, she's just not going to be turning. But you can see that... Yeah, alright, it's... It's, yeah, correct one. So, what we have to do is... Wait, access none. Okay, I know what's the problem here. Yet again, we have to get player character. And we need to check, is this true? So, is valid? I mean, is it valid? Not true, but is it valid? If it is, boom, we can do it. Now, then, what we need to do next is we have to and actually rotate uh, the AI as well. So how to do that? Uh, let's just create a new function. I'm gonna call this rot. Uh, let's call turn character. All right. Uh, let's do one thing. We need to check. Of course, we don't want the character to be constantly doing that. Did we? No, we didn't do that. So we need to check if the character is still in range. And uh, if it is, boom, we can do that then. Yes, that is what we should do. So I'm gonna do. I need another branch here, and we need to now do do some checking. So we need to check if the turn is not equal 
to zero. So anything else but zero. Uh, and we need to also check if the speed is less than 0.01 so that we are not moving. So just in case, if it's less than 0.01, I mean, we, I don't think we would actually necessarily do that since we cannot either way turn if we are moving. But to be safe, let's do it that way. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, sure. Okay, so now we need to do a little bit calculations here as well. So we need to also again get player character, and I'm gonna check is this valid. Actually, we I don't think we have to because it's 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 doing it already from here inside. So let's do it just in case. So is valid? No, not that one. The other one is valid. True, true. I believe this would be necess unnecessary, yes. Um, so now I'm gonna get this. We also are gonna need to get try get pawn owner. And um, we need to get location from both. So get actor location. I'm gonna duplicate this down to here. And we need to find the look at rotation. So find look at rotation. Then we need to get also pawn owner rotation. So get actor ro get actor rotation here. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna just have to get this because why not? Um, now I'm gonna make rotator, and from both of these I'm gonna break rotator. I'm gonna duplicate this down in here. There we go. And uh, now that way. All right. So I mean, oh, this is gonna be simple. So from actor rotation, the X goes directly to the X, and pitch goes to pitch. But yaw comes from this look. Find look at rotation. Um. Then we need to smooth this out. Uh. So we're gonna get this try get pawn owner and we need to set actor rotation i'm gonna connect this in here so now let's smooth this out as well so from near rotation we need interp two um and sorry that's my alarm clock which is kind of funny shut up i am doing tutorial video all right so back to the business so the current is obviously our current the, the the ai's current rotation so let's get it from here like that the target is gonna be obviously the one we just calculated uh, i'm gonna straighten this up now delta time is gonna be get world delta seconds and speed um uh, let's try with five compile and save and now we can go back to event grab and add it right after the calculate direction so this has to happen after we have calculated the direction because of reasons so let's see if this works now Well, it kind of, kind of does, but it is an issue for whatever reason that is. Um, perhaps that's maybe too fast. Let's make it to three, or sort of three. Let's see again. Um, holy crap! That is still. Point eight. Let's see if is this all right. So yeah, it was the five was just way too much. So it so it has to be a lot. I'm gonna try point five. Let's see point point five if that's okay. I believe that's um. 
Well, it looks good, kind of. In the port. I'm gonna make it a little bit more like 0. 0.65. All right, that looks actually pretty cool. And now let's see how does it look like when she starts moving. Boom, 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 boom. All right, there she goes. And she doesn't rotate or turn towards us when she's moving, but there we go. Now she starts doing that. And let's... Alright, that looks rather good. I mean, even this looks kind of okay if you don't want to use the directional thing. But if you want to use that, we can still do that as well. Um, Let's see. Now, when she turns... Yeah, let's d try that one. Alright, so... Now, if you don't have... Um, directional movements, meaning like strafing left, right, and different angles, then you can skip the next part, and why we see you in the next video, hopefully. Hopefully you will like it, so you can subscribe, and click the notification bell, follow me on Twitter, so you can get notifications when new videos drop in. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. And, and as for those who still have those required animations, we can continue from here on. So, um, this is nothing too complicated, actually. It's quite simple, really, because we have done basically everything else ready for us. So, we need to create new blend space. So, we're gonna right-click, animation, blend space. Select your animation skeleton, and I'm gonna call this tutorial bullshit. I'm gonna open it up. Now this is how it's gonna look like. So first things first, we got the horizontal axis, and this is this is our direction, and it co goes from minus one eighty to one eighty, and I'm gonna make the number of grid divisions or the divisors, divisors whatever these are, to eight. Then, the second one, vertical axis, is a speed. Uh, from 0 to 400 is my speed. And the, I'm going to make this number of crits to 40. And just in case, I'm going to make only this interpolation to 0 0.5. So it, 0 0.2, so it's a little bit smoother when the speed changes. For here, I'm not going to use any anything. Because, because, I mean, if you want, we can try like 0.0. Uh, point 0.1 or like oh five or something but I'm gonna make it to zero all right so now we can start for this so we need to get first idle we have idle I'm go I'm we're not gonna use this idle I mean yeah if you if you if you have only one idle then yes it's gonna be using this idle um no root motion and I'm gonna Fill the below the bottom line with this, and there we go. Then we need to do is um. So this is a yeah. So f walk forward, uh, loop no root motion, and it goes in the middle around speed of one eighty. Then I need to do is walk backward. It's gonna be in 180, but on the both sides. There and here, 180. Alright. And then I need to do is... Let's do run backwards. Loop, no root motion it goes to top each it each, each, each corner uh, in in top it, it each top corners um wait yeah yes that's ex exactly uh we need to run forward as well it goes to middle but 400 boom there we go all right 
Now, run, forward. Uh, no, we don't need that, actually. So what we can do now, I'm gonna do is... Strafe. So we can do run, strafe. Uh, let's do run, strafe, left, 135. It goes here. Direction minus 135, and it's a running speed. There you go. Uh, run strafe 45 goes here. And run strafe left loop. No, that's normal. We, not, we need it elsewhere. Uh, run strafe right 135 goes here. Run strafe right 45 goes here. And then we can do strafe left 35 goes in here left 45 in here left straight left loop goes to minus 90 and 180 speed and the same thing goes to right so straight fly right there we go uh this goes here and this goes here all right, now we need still, we need to do run all T loop goes to minus 90 at the speed of 400 and run RT goes the opposite direction. There we go. So now we have fully directional movements for our AI, the, this one. So I'm going to save this and close this. I'm going to go back to tutorial in boob. BP and all we really have to do is go to locomotion idle slash movements. We just have to actually change this. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna add my tutorial bullshit here and speed with speed. And now the direction we need variable for this. And we're gonna drag out and promote to variable and it's automatically called as direction. Component save. Now we go to event graph and we have to add here between something. So from get velocity, I'm gonna direction. So there we have calculate direction. And the rotation is gonna be obviously from our get try get pawn owner. We need to get actor rotation. And uh, return, return value. Promote to variable. No, don't. Actually, don't. We already have the direction, so we're gonna set it here. Boom. boom. Compile and save. Um, now, it should actually be it. So now, hopefully she will turn. Yeah, she actually turns properly. It's not perfect. We could try smoothing it up a little bit as well, because, well, that looked good, actually. Let's see if this looks good enough. Yeah, I believe this actually looked good enough. Um, uh, I believe that's all for now, and I hope you like this video, I hope you find this useful. And we will see what next time, what, what comes ahead. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and everything. I will see you next time. Bye.